Hey, hey guys, it's Nicole. Welcome back to Chronicles of a Crafter. So I've been making some tags to go into our Tag a Week Challenge junk journal that we're making and I wanted to show you guys what I've been doing to store some of my tags in the process. I made this little, um, it's a little tag holder um, and it has like cute little charms and a little cluster on the front and I saw this on another channel, Treasure Books maybe, and um, yeah she made these cute little books and they are just a little journal or tag holder these have very tiny tags in it. This was made from a six by six piece of paper, right? So this is a good way to use up your six by six paper packs. And um, it houses, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six tags based on the extra pockets that I placed here in the on the inside. So um, yeah, I just thought I'd pop on here and show you guys how I made this. Here's another one, and it's it has a little closure with a um, a little paper binder, little clip right there. And I just put charms everywhere. There's charms dangling from the spine. There's a charm dangling from the closure. Same with this one. Here's the cluster on the front. The charms dangling from the side and on the closure. And again, this one holds. Oh, about six as well. The pages are just six by six paper folded into fours, right? And um, I just added a little pocket on the inside of the front and back covers. Uh, these pockets can also hold a tiny tag, right? So these are all for like really small tags. If you have tags in your, um, you know, in your stash that you just don't know where to house them or um, how to store them. This is a good little way to do so um, just by making a little book that can clip into a journal and there's all your tags right there. I have a much larger one. This one was made with a 12 by 12 sheet of paper and it houses lots of larger tags. So this one does not have a front cover pocket but I can always add one later but it has the same number of pages on the inside and um, I just put a bunch of my oversized tags in here. The other two, the smaller ones, this one I, I did a staple on the spine just three little staples right in there and this one and this is my error okay don't do as I do do as I say <laughs> do not use a um, an eyelet to hold your charm on the spine because it makes it bulky and now this cannot close or lay flat as opposed to this one that I'm going to show you how to um, attach the charm to the spine here. Uh, this one lays it very flat and it can fit into any junk journal without any hindrance. This will be a little bit of a problem. But I still like it. It's cute. I mean, if anything else, I can always leave them sitting on my desk because that works when it's... Um, when it's a little chunky. If you are going to use an eyelet in the spine you will have to create a much wider spine and um, again yeah I can set these on my desk uh, they will stand up on their own. Uh, this is the much larger one that I just took to my sewing machine and stitched a straight line down the middle of the book with all of the pages intact and then I used my well, not my idea. This came again from Treasure Books. I believe her name is Natasha. Um, she lives in New Zealand or Australia, somewhere um, off the coast. <laughs> and um, yeah, I just added some charms on here with a little a little stitch holding in the, uh, um, what is this, the jump ring, okay? And then from the jump ring, you can add as many charms as you like. I have here lots of charms that I can still add to if I wanted to. And my closure also has a charm with a bull nose uh, clip and a bulb pin holding up this cute little bell right there. Okay, let's make some. I'm probably going to make this large one. I have not done my cluster on the front yet, so I can do that right now. Let me just pull out some of these tags so it'll lay flat. Just want to show you how deep this is. Very large uh, chunky tags are in here. These are some layered tags that I made in a previous video. If I remember, I will place it right up here in the corner for you guys to find um, a couple of the videos to go along with this 
this process. So anyway, I'm just going to do some something really simple just to fill in this really blank white space up here at the top of the, the book. And I'm just going to use some Fabrifix glue because my glue stand has truly been working out for me a little too well. <laughs> um, I have not um, had any spillage whatsoever and uh, I just have to clean off the tip of the glue and it's ready to go. So I'm just going to use a little bit of Fabrifix straight across the middle here of this ribbon and then I'm going to add the ribbon to the front of the book and the ribbon is just sort of like it's just a little band to go across the front right it doesn't really doesn't really have too much of a purpose other than to hold the rest of my items down in place so I'm just going to place it right about above center and then my cluster will go all around it so above center, if anything is overhanging on the edges, I will cut that off at the end. And I'm um, just going to use some, this is some washi from Tamu, okay. Yeah, I got this in a stash of oh, the, oh, I know. This is the washi stash that I picked up from Tamu. I came in a really cool, um, like a vellum envelope. And all I did was add a little... I added a little uh, Velcro dot to keep it closed and it's working out really well. So a little washi stamp will go on here next. I'm just going to place it right on top of, I should probably put a little bit of Scotch Create glue onto the washi. I just never know, like I mean I'm sure these are great washies, I'm not disregarding how the quality of the um, of the washies that I picked up and these are pretty sticky so I can tell you that much um, I just like to add a little bit of extra glue just to um, reinforce just never know how long these have been sitting in a warehouse somewhere and I'm just gonna lightly place it because I don't know exactly where I want to place the rest of my cluster so Let's see, that can go there. I believe this is also a sticker. I'll find a spot for that. Yeah, that can go there. And then my little butterfly can go there. This is paper. I'm just gonna add a little bit of Fabrifix to it. I could use glue stick. I could use um, art glitter. But yeah, I'm just gonna add a little bit of glue to this and tuck it right underneath here. Okay, and then this is my little number stamp. I don't know if it's a sticker or if it's a label that I have to glue down. Let me try from the back, just in case it's paper. Nope, it's a sticker, yay. All right, so <laughs> I just inked these. I fussy cut around them. This is just a little bit of some cluster paper that came um, from Temu, and I'm just using up my stash in the process of making these cute little things and I can place my butterfly here or here yeah I like it down below this is a paper butterfly I got this at the dollar store believe it or not and then I just dyed it with some Tim Holtz distress ink um, in a spray bottle so yeah I just spritzed on here a little bit of um, some ink to uh, change the color. They were all white and I dyed it with with uh, something that like this. Like this is just Distress Ink in a spray bottle. Um, here's some red. I've done this before I think. I've showed you guys. Here's the yellow and I believe this yellow is even just paint. Like it's just yellow paint with water. I don't think I, <laughs> I don't think that's Distress Ink at all. So where did I say I was going to put my butterfly down here? sure why not if that's not where I said that's where it's going now okay so yeah I'm just gonna stick all of that down on here and it looks great right it's it has, gives it a little bit of dimension it has like you know some depth to it and if there's anything hanging off the edges I'm just gonna snip it off here and snip it off here without cutting my paper 
let's make one because it's super simple um, I will make another one may not do a cluster on the front but I'll show you the measurements on how to make one that is this size six by six and we're going to do a three hole pamphlet stitch uh, like this one on there okay so let's make one first of all you're going to need 12 by 12 paper now this is 12 by 12 paper not cardstock um, my cover is um, going to be 12 by 12 medium weight cardstock I picked this up at a Goodwill it was in a stack of nursery paper it looked like it looks like this on the other side it's, uh, it's by we are memory keepers it says Comstock collection nursery so it's just some coordinating uh, double-sided paper I'm going to cut this in half because I don't need um, a 12 by 12 sheet and what you can do is make two of these uh, with a six you know two of these um, with a 12 by 12 sheet um, just by cutting the cover in half you'll then have a 6 by 12 left over to make another one right and we're not even going to scoreboard anything I'm just gonna fold this in half make sure my edges meet really tight and I'm deb debating if I want the stars and stripes on this side or if I want to place it on the inside yeah I like this this coordinates just a little bit better all right so there's our cover and let me place my glue back into the glue stand so that it does not ooze out everywhere there's my extra piece for another cover and this is just single-sided paper you don't need double-sided paper for this process um, it is best that the paper is non-directional so that when you fold it up it does not matter too much you know so yeah I'm just folding this 12 by 12 sheet in half and then I will fold it in half again so now I have this cute little square and it measures six by six and this becomes our first little signature that goes into the journal and we'll cut some thumb notches in there and uh, make some pockets so again non-directional paper single sided fold it in half and then fold it in half again again we have this cute little square you just want to make sure that all your corners touch and they line up really well because that's that's important and if you want to grab your bone folder and bone fold some really tight creases in here which helps push the paper in the right direction you can yep and um, yeah and then we will assemble because that's really all it takes so let's assemble I will place my two pages in like so okay and as usual if you notice every junk journal that you do once you start assembling signature pages everything that's on the inside of the outer page starts to push itself out towards the right right so here's our cover once you place the cover on you'll notice that all your pages are oozing out on the side right here I can zoom you guys in just a wee bit right so here's all your pages that are oozing out on the side you may have some oozing out on the top if um, you're lucky everything will line up at the top and the bottom but you do need to remove some off of the of the sides so I'm not even going to um, measure anything I'm just gonna show you guys what I do I have an eyeball um, <laughs> an eyeball <laughs> I do I have an eyeball measurement of how much was sticking out so I'm just gonna take my craft knife right and again want to make sure that that inside page is really tucked in tight towards the, the crease the spine and <clears throat> I'm just going to eyeball it and shave off 
a couple of smidgens off the edge here to get a nice straight edge. I mean, why not? Why, why wouldn't we want a nice straight edge? Okay. And I'm okay with the top. Um, it wasn't that much overhang at the top. But if you notice, your inside pages now line up really nicely with your cover. And nothing is sticking out on the edges right here. Okay. So let's just get started with stitching this together. So you want to get everything nice and flat. Oh, before we do that, we got to cut in some thumb notches and then glue these pages. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> Jumping ahead. <laughs> Let's glue these pages down um, to make the actual pocket. And before we do that, we have to cut the thumb notch. I'm going to use my scalloped edge. I'll show you on this one. I just use a half circle. Um, actually, this is a half oval, right? I just punched it all the way through both pages right there and, um, you know, made a pocket thumb notch. On this one, I used a scalloped edge, which I'm going to use on this, but I didn't do both pages. I just did one page the front here and um, just way that you can see that it's a pocket and it gives the back page a little bit more stability um, for holding in your tags and whatnot and I did that on all of these here inside of the journal and um, yeah this one um, when I stitched it the uh, inner uh, thread was like a turquoise color so I just added a couple of um, like heart paper, paper clips and with that you can like tuck some extra things underneath you can tuck some extra things underneath there um, it's just for housing stuff right so yeah it makes it makes it just a little bit more useful so to do that I open up both my sheets of paper and I'm going to do it together like cut them together so I'm just going to tuck one sheet inside the other, right? And this will be our front um, page of our, of our signature. So both of these together will be page one and then page two. I'm going to scallop um, edge this right here to create a thumb notch just about a little less than halfway, okay? And by that, I mean a little less than halfway inside of here, okay? You don't want it to go all the way up to half. I put mine somewhere about um, just under half, okay? And uh, that gives me a cute little scallop, and they're both even. And then I'm going to flip my page over, and this side over here is where the back two signature pockets are going to go. And I'm holding them together, and I'm going to do the same thing, just give it a little scalloped thumb notch a little less than halfway and somewhat centrally equidistant from one end to the other all right now when you separate your pages when you separate your pages you now have four individual pockets right and they are all facing the right direction with their little thumb notches um, on each page as it should be okay so there's that one and there's that one okay place them back into our signature if you want to ink them this would be the time to do so okay so I inked my larger one I uh, just inked all around it with uh, ground espresso because that's what I had available and I'm gonna do the same thing why not why why not and I also scalloped my edge I'm sorry, my corners. So I put that little decorative corner right there on all of the pages. So if you want to ink, this will be the time to do it. And then you can decorative your corners with either a corner rounder or if you have a little, um, you know, a pretty, a pretty punch, you can do that. So yeah, this is the most tedious part. It's like inking it appropriately because some sections will be seen and others won't so like right in here will be seen but like right in here won't 
but it'll be seen on this side. So this is where you want to ink back here. But once you glue all the pages together, like right here won't be seen. So it doesn't make sense to waste your ink and ink there or your time really. Um, but yeah, this is like just some shortcuts to the process um, and it saves your material as well. So there's that one. So you see the difference. This one's inked, that one's not, and you can tell there's a distinction there. There is a pocket there, whereas you can't really tell, like, where, where does it end right there, right? So we're going to go ahead and ink this to give some distinction. And again, inking is optional, guys. I did not ink the little mini ones. The mini ones were made from a 6 by 6 sheet and they made very tiny little um, tag pockets and this will make a much larger one so again inking is optional all right i think that's plenty of inking for those pages for me anyway i'm going to tuck them back in there remembering which one was your first page and which one was your last because if you don't do it um, appropriately your outer page will now be sticking out further than your inner page and you'll have something that looks like this so you then have to flip it back around this was my inner page and that's how you know that um, you know the order in which your signature pages will go and then place them back into this cover right here let me go get some thread to stitch this all together and then we can decorate the front and I'll be right back into ticks. All right guys, so now the only thing left to do is to glue up our pockets right through here and um, and then stitch our signatures together. So I'm going to use, uh, let's use some art glitter and here I will just grab a little a little glue mat right here and do one section at a time I also rounded my corners if you guys want your corners rounded now would be the time to do it instead of gluing your corners shut first and then have to punch through glue but um, if you do round your corners you would then have to go back in and ink that corner if you didn't ink um, after you rounded them so here I'm just going to add a little bit of art glitter. I'm using my precision tip today after yesterday's fiasco with, <laughs> with the standard tip that the glue bottle comes with. And I'm also using my glue mat right off the bat to um, avoid any spillage onto the, the pages underneath. Okay. And I don't have a... Oof, why don't I have a little towel here? Where's all of my stuff? I feel like someone has been in the craft room, not me. Don't know where all my little towels went. I usually have some, um, you know, dry wipes or such laying around and I don't see any. But I'm just going to continue gluing my corners here. And this is one of the reasons why I use two separate um, sheets. You can use the same pattern paper, but it just helps to um, for distinction. Like I always going to know that the blue one is my outer cover because when I reassemble them, again, you don't want those pages sticking out in the corners um, in the wrong order. So here I'm just going to do a couple more streams of glue here. And making sure that my pages line up really well. Okay, and this last page will get some glue as well. All right, I think that should just about do it. Let's go ahead and stitch this guy together. 
giving us um, four pockets and then we can talk about what we want to do for the inside we can take some of this other sheet of paper that we have left over the six by six by twelve um, that we left out have left over from the cover and make some additional pockets for the inside um, front and back covers or we can add some more pockets to these um, pockets and make a pocket right there or here or just about anywhere I'm going to um, give you guys just I'm gonna give this just a second to dry but the, um, the the three hole pamphlet stitch same rules apply you want to make sure that you have uh, three times the height or two and a half times the height of thread so like one two and a half or so you know I have a little bit extra because we're going to do that little stitch at the top to hold our charms in place let me close up my glue so I don't have a spillage okay and I can move my mat um, let's just go ahead and stitch this up I think the glue should be more than dry by now again you want to make sure that your pages are correctly inserted into here right your you know you know <laughs> and I'm gonna use my all to create the holes for my three hole pamphlet stitch I'm going to turn it over because I notice, and you probably notice, that when you poke your holes from the inside of your book out to the the back, you know, the outside of the book, this is what happens. You get frayed edges. It looks unclean. Here, I'll zoom you in. When you poke the hole through from the inside of the book, this is what it does. It pokes the paper and makes it very messy on the outside. And I don't like that. Let's do it from the outside in and create some really clean holes for the, um, the three hole pamphlet stitch. You can clip it if you're not comfortable with, um, if you don't think your pages will stay together, if you're not comfortable using an awl this way there's only one thing that you have to focus on and it's where the all is going and not through your fingers and such so let's just fix that by clipping it and I'm just gonna poke three random holes in here just directly through the spine and in through all the pages and you see it's a much cleaner hole now it will be frayed and messy on the other side yeah, I'm trying to block everything else for you but yeah it's a much cleaner hole and um, it doesn't look you know frayed but it will be on this side which really does not matter too much and then I'll punch another hole right through here so one two three okay and then right up here in this top section I am going to punch two more holes so really close together one and two okay and that's where my little loop is going to go all right let's start stitching this up you're going to start in the center as we always do go through the middle and right go through the center pull it as far as you like to either make a dangle at the bottom or a bow in the middle then you're going to go through this top hole right up here okay and then instead of going down to the bottom which we normally would do for a three hole pamphlet stitch you're going to go right up here into this top section that we um, made those two little micro holes and then you're going to go right back through it the second hole that we placed up there and then I'm going to go through it again to make a double knot, uh, like a double loop. It really helps to reinforce this section um, for where your charm is going to live. Oh, I'm not even in frame. <laughs> My bad. Um, <laughs> this little loop right here, I try to get it on a white section. That little loop is where your charm is going to live, and it's it's really important to like get it to um, like be reinforced. So I'm doing a double loop right through here okay so this is my second time going through here okay and you want to pull it taut but not tearing right and if it'll help you can take your awl and tuck it underneath there to hold it in place right or you can put another needle in there I've done that 
and um, so we've done our, our, our loop we've done two of our three whole pamphlet stitches and then we're going to go all the way back down here to complete the pamphlet stitch just go down to the bottom and then come back up through the middle as we normally would having you zoomed in um, does uh, take it out of focus just a little bit for you but sorry about that all right so now we have ourselves a three hole pamphlet stitch with a charm loop at the top right there okay I'm gonna pull everything nice and taut not tearing I'm going to do a double knot, uh, we'll run, um, it's like a lock knot, once right over left and then left over right and then I'm going to cut away the excess, oh where's my scissor, cut away the excess of the, um, the wax string and now everything is all held together, this could be tied into a bow or you could leave it long and put some extra charms on there, okay. And um, and now we're going to, um, what do you call it, find some charms to put on the edge here, right through here. So, it's a couple of different ways you can do this. Jump rings always starts off really nicely. So you can use a jump ring and some needle nose pliers or some jewelry tools to, um, to open up your jump ring and I'm just going to loop it, can you see that? I'm just going to loop it straight through that little that little hook, that little um, uh, threaded loop that we made. There we go. And I'm just going to place that jump ring directly through there. Super simple so far, right guys? I think so. And rotate that, that closure to the um, to the jump ring towards the center of the thread so that nothing falls out then you can add all your charms any charm that you want I have some of these on this little um, ball and hook um, type of chain and I have like these are just some Tim Holt charms on here I think this was from his like I uh, what do you call it St. Patty Day packaging of um, charms this one says lucky it has a four leaf clover and a little um, wishbone on it uh, the other one I have has like a blue ribbon some four leaf clovers and um, a little star all oh, the stars so cute I'm gonna do that because of these stars and stripes on the inside here so yeah I just I just pre hung these on here it just goes to show guys like junk journaling is basically just like it sounds you would have thrown these away under normal circumstances if you were not a junk journaler but I tend to keep everything I keep it all all right so here's our little charm dangling from our charm spine right here and uh, for closures you can do just about anything definitely a bone nose clip would work right with the charm or what have you that would look cute there but because we're doing silver over here I think maybe a silver um, charm enclosure would be better but here's one that's in rose gold this one just has a paper bead hanging from it that I made right and I think I showed you guys how to do this I learned this from Pam at the Paper Outpost, these paper beads. I'll put a video for that right up here as well, or I'll just find Pam's video and put it in the description box down below so you guys can find that and just click directly on it. Let's figure out what we're going to do for the front cover. I'm thinking something super cute, but in the meantime, let me just show you what we've got going on on the inside here. Very lightweight, right? You can definitely tuck this into a journal with a clip right just clip it into any page in your journal no problem but on the inside we have one pocket here two three and four okay if we want to do some contrast we can take the other side of this and pop it in right here put some extra pockets in right but let's cluster up let's cluster up the front of this and um, and see what else we can do with it two ticks 
Alright guys, so I pulled some stuff out of my stash to make a cluster on the front here. All I did was really cut the piece of paper off of the 6x12 that was left. Gave myself a little 6x1.5 inch strip. I pulled some of this pretty um, mesh um, ribbon out of my stash as well for this. I'm just going to use a little bit of Scotch Create and it'll get rid of all those little <clears throat> all those little glue strings that you'll see in between the um, the patterns of the mesh. So yeah, I'm just using some fat, um, Scotch Create and getting it in all the areas that's solid on this little mesh piece of fabric or ribbon. And that should hold, right? That should hold it down in place because then I'm going to place some of this on top of it and I have glue on my fingers so I'm just going to use some of that <laughs> and rub the rest onto the Scotch Create glue stick to um, to glue this down. This is just again piece of the remaining 6x12 that was left over um, just cut into a 6x1.5 inch strip and I'm going to place this right on the cover of this project think I got enough on there and I want my str uh, stripes on this side so I want my stars visible over here slide that up into place okay that should hold look at this glue everywhere and then I have a little thing going on over here I'm gonna put another little cluster um, on top of this so here I'll just slide this over so you can see what I'm doing here I have just some pages from a stash of paper I'm just putting down uh, Scrabble pieces on top of it that spell out the word tags so I have four little Scrabble pieces right here I'm just gonna place them in like a random little zigzag pattern right on top of these are just two little pieces of paper that are like pre collaged right they are uh, faux collaged I got this um, in a stash of pages I think I did my Temu organized with me paper haul and showed you guys all those papers that I picked up from Temu this was just one of the paper stashes that was already pre collaged and I didn't even use two pages I used one and a half pages you can see here I just ripped off I guess you can't it's too it's too like you know there's no contrast so you can't see but it's just one and a half sheets I just cut it cut the second piece in half and glued it on top of the first one all right and I see here I have some lifting on my top piece of paper so I'm just going to add some Fabrifix glue there and add some Fabrifix glue on the back of here to hold all of this down. And this is just one of the ways to create like a little collage cluster on the front of your um, tag booklet or pocketed, but I don't even know what we're calling this. What are we calling this guys? Are these tag, tag books? Um, pocketed tag journals I don't, I don't know I don't know we're calling it something by the end of this video I should have a name for this project but this is my little cluster I like this one the most it came out for me it came out the best I will cut away the excess up here don't need all of that up there or down here okay and just keep an eye on it make sure all everywhere that you want glue down is staying down because that's what I had to do with some of my others that were um, you know more raised like this guy right here I just had to make sure that all of the parts that I want to be glued down stays down I don't mind if this phrase like you know if it's sticking out like that but the center of it I wanted to make sure that it's it stays down and it's glued in place so I'll just keep an eye on this and make sure that everything stays <laughs> I'll put my glue back into the holder and um, for this closure I'm just going to use what am I going to use I'm just going to use this I have here it's a clothes pin with a bulb pin and hanging from that is a little cute like queen bee 
and a pearl. So I'm just going to add that on the front here as my closure and I can tuck several tags in there. If you want to put pockets on the inside, this is one way to do it. Just use the reverse of the page, right? Because it gives you lots of contrast. I can fold this. Let's see, I'll fold it into a third. So I don't need a whole lot of it to make a pocket. And let's see, I will probably cut it somewhere about here. We don't even need a full sheet to make um, this pocket. Everything will get straightened up with my little mini guillotine here. I'll straighten up all my edges. So this right here measures just about five and a quarter by four. And that can go right there in your corner. I'm gonna slice this off to give me a cute little tuck instead of a full pocket. All right, there's a tuck. And I'll round the corners to match the other rounded corners right there. And I'll add some Fabrifix glue around the edges to seal this down. And instead of making a full pocket, we're only gluing two sides to make a tuck based on the way that you've cut your page to go right in here. Alright guys, I think that's pretty much it. I'm going to leave you right here. Hope you guys have a super crafty day. If you decide to give this project a try, please tag me in your projects on whatever social medias that you use. I want to thank each and every one of you for subscribing to the channel, hanging out with me on my crazy Chronicles of a Crafter channel, and doing some of these fun projects. So thanks to each and every one of you who have subscribed, who watch the videos, who tag me in their projects, and as well as who hit that thumbs up button for liking the, com the, the content here on this channel. Alright guys, I will definitely talk to y'all later. My fingers are gluey. <laughs> Have a super crafty day guys. Go do something wonderful and as always stay naturally curious and I'll definitely talk to you in the next video. Bye!